Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Bare Naked ABCs, where we discuss every song from 7 to Y. And we aren't going to wait a week to do it. We're going to discuss it right now, not next time. Although we will discuss it next time, but it won't be next time the next time. We're already discussing next time this time, and next time we won't be discussing next time because it's time will have already passed. D- does that make sense? I what? <laughs> I fell asleep. But but anyways, did you, did um, you, did you, did you... me right round, baby, right round. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't get on with this, then then this is gonna blend this time into next time, and so oh yeah, I, and then the next time, and then yeah. yeah. So I should introduce our co-host tonight. I have with me Jeff and Heidi. Hello, everyone. Hello. And we have no Aaron or Stefan, but that's all right. We'll get them next time. <laughs> oh, be here I see next what you did So now, how long will that take? That yeah. Um. <laughs> how long? I know. I I went. I, just... I, went, I went for a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> you went back almost a whole year on that one. I did. I went back. <laughs> So this week's song is the song Next Time. You can always get it right next time. Next time. You can Wait, always you get it right next time. I mean, after tonight is the night I fell asleep at the wheel. It was like, we you gotta cut all four of our songs. Although originally the working title was "You Can Always Get It Right Next Time," way too long. So, yeah, thank goodness they shut yeah, that too long. That's yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, do you guys know who wrote this song, <laughs> Jeff? Do you know? Uh, no, no, I did not look at it. No, I mean, I can. Do you have a guess? Aaron's not here, so I gotta put someone on the on the spot. I feel like Paige was involved in it. I feel like it is a Paige song. But the fact that you're asking me makes me think it's not Paige Robertson. <laughs> nope. Well. <laughs> so I'm going to say Paige Hearn. Ooh, so close. You're, you're, you're half halfway right. There. Oh, you're halfway there. <laughs> oh! It's everybody but the kitchen Tyler. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's actually yep. unusually. A little bit of everybody in this then. Okay. Paige Hearn, Cregan, and Robertson. I know, wow. right? Yeah, okay. I, I mean, we're going to have to get down to whether or not this is a song by committee or a full a full band track. So, right. <laughs> I, think we should... I mean, ly- lyrically, it makes me think of one person quite a bit. And interestingly but... enough, in the acoustic version, you hear more of Kevin too. Like you can hear like mm. the Kevin compositional like uh, influence mm-hmm. there, but you don't. You get more Paige Robertson in the um, album version. So, right. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Uh, musically, I can definitely see where there was a lot of influence because there's actually a lot going on in this song musically. Oh yeah, surprisingly, because like this song's taken a weird uh, trajectory for me because um, I think uh, EDE was my second PNL. I got into BNL right around the time of E and E because the first concert I went to was uh, Peep Show. Um, the first album I got was Maroon. I've talked about that, but EDE was my second one because of the concert. And I think I I remember because we when I, we were talking about this being the next song. 
I remember this not being one of my favorites on the album. Um, I, well, I, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think originally my first in, influ, my first instinct of this one was it wasn't, um, and because I thought it was simplistic or something. As I've listened to it since, I mean, I don't want to show all my cards. My opinion of the song has changed uh, drastically, <laughs> and uh, um, it's definitely far more complex than I gave it credit for. Way more complex. I won't say. I won't say how drastically it's changed, but it definitely has changed drastically. Everything had changed. <laughs> There's an everything cut. had changed. Yes, <laughs> everything and has changed. I love yeah. E2E. It's it's one of my favorite albums, actually. Um, with mm-hmm. like, I I really love this album. Almost every song on it, on it I think, is just yeah. perfect. And where next time comes on the album is necessary. It's kind of like. After coming right after another postcard, you needed this very drastic difference. It's right. kind of like um, putting Hakuna Matata right after Mufasa's death scene. You're like, okay, I need some, I need something different <laughs> yeah. here. Um, so right. that's I, right. I, I uh, maybe so. that's because uh, maybe that's where my opinion was fostered originally. Like thinking back to my first impressions of the album, because there's so many great songs on EDE. There's so many songs I love on EDE. Maybe at the time, I never gave this one the time it deserved, and I, you know. Um, and I've I've corrected that. Since I mean, then. for but, you, yeah. I think well, it's my I top the... song on this album. But next time is another great mm. one, in my opinion. So, right, I'm a big yeah, one. Oh, yeah, are you too, kidding? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one, I feel like I need you know a, a cigarette after I listen to it because I'm just like because <laughs> it's just so like whoa. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't. Anyway. So I, I have to agree with you. I think I think the play its placement on here for me as well didn't lead me to liking mm-hmm. this song as much as mm-hmm. I would later on. Um, in my younger years, I liked off uh, another postcard a lot more, and I really have always loved for you. So this kind of was like that down in between. Um, and I also like another postcard. And then for you, seemed like a more natural transition than putting this in between there. So I always kind of wondered why they they put this song in the middle of that. I don't know. It It's an odd song. It starts off slow. It kind of picks up, but it's never a full rocker. It's it's a very odd song. But tell maybe Heidi, maybe you can tell me a little bit more um, musically what this song I sure can. Um, So this is in uh, the key of um, E major, but it's capoed at two. So it allows um, the the guitarist would look at it corded in D major. So they would see it in D, but it's actually an E major. It's very interesting in that, um, well, it clocks in at 127 beats per minute, which is almost exact. So I think they were using um, a click track. Um, it's got a very interesting form in that it's uh, it's got a core. It starts with the chorus, then you've got a verse, then a chorus, then it's got this the break. It's it's like um, it it has the um, uh, oh well oh well that section, and then it goes back into another verse. Uh, then you have a chorus again, and then you have that little tiny outro. It follows a chord progression, a very interesting por- chord progression in it. The verses, or sorry, the chorus has a one six minor six. So it goes from the, the tonic chord to a minor six chord to a major four chord to a minor two chord. So it's a really D to B minor to G to E minor or E like that's if you were playing in D, uh, capoed. Um, the chorus switches a little bit um, in that, uh, hold on, let me pull up my notes here. I'm sorry, it starts with the chorus, like I said. <laughs> um, and then the verse goes, um, let's see, it's a one chord to a major three chord, which is very different. So you're you're basically you would expect a three chord in a major scale to be minor. It's usually a minor chord. In this case, they're raising the third degree, which takes it to a major three. So you've got a major three chord to a major four chord to a two minor two chord because it goes uh, one three four two. So we the choruses are all one six four two. You can always get it right. The 
verses are one major three, four minor two. You can count on me to mess it up. And then you've got that little oh. mini break, which it goes four one four one four five. When you die, they make a list of every love you never kissed, of each regret and each mistake, every choice you fail to make. which is a half cadence. So it's that doesn't give you a resolution that, oh, well, that part, oh, well. And then he goes back into that um, next section. Uh, which makes it really, it, it's very discordant. Like you you are not satisfied right. at the end of that. No. You, then it's goes, a very sad Well, moment. it's a shame I have, it's mm -hmm. a shame I have to wait until the ending, that whole section. And then he brings back, or they bring back the chorus again. And then they have that little outro, which just goes a one, a six, four, two, one, six, four, two. And then it ends on a one chord. So it does bring you back home. They, they end on mm. that final one chord. Um, so it does resolve at the end, but it's a very complicated mm. chordal um, structure and an interesting form because of what they bring into it, where you've got the chorus, then a verse, then a chorus, a verse, a chorus, and a verse. Uh, but you've got that break in between of that oh well section in between the last verse mm. and the, the chorus. So... Hmm. Actually, he does two choruses in a row. Sorry, I, I misplaced that. Yeah, it's a very interesting pattern that's going on. Put it that way. Yeah, he it's it's a different song. I like the fact that like you were telling, like it's not a normal one four five type progression, and you can feel that when you're listening to it. Mm -hmm. I mean that jump, that jump right at the beginning. Like you said, the one, the six. You can count on me. Mm -hmm. Like that, that six jump is just oh um, yeah, is really really unique. Um, so the the verse, the verse is just the 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 melody that they chose to go with for this. I thought was really cool, and it, and it sets it up as it builds to the end because at the, uh, you know in in the final verse, um, he's oh yeah, just going ballistic at that point. And um, that that works because of the setup that they had done throughout the song. That final verse, I, I love a song that builds, and this one definitely builds. And what's funny because it does pull back, like right before, like you were saying, like the bridge part when it goes back to minimalistic. Next time, next time, where the backing vocals just do that, and then he does that. Um, uh, you know the the part about uh, you, you all the all the lips you never kiss that whole section. It goes very minimalist, and of course, then it yeah. comes back with bombast. Yeah, it, really it's cool. it's. When we get into lyrics, there's so much great stuff in here that is then um, brought to another level with the the music part behind it and the progression and what Steven does vocally, <clears throat> excuse me, in this that really echoes this kind of play with with whatever the narrator is whatever emotions he's carrying through the song and then that backing off with the mm -hmm. oh well and then he just like but guess what yeah but well, you keep you you keep saying things that make you think because I, I feel like the lyrics can can be in this interpreted several ways in this i think you interpret them the same way i do oh, based on what you're talking out. about we'll but that, that so that's that's the uh, theory in a box part, the Reader's Digest condensed version of the theory behind the song. Mm -hmm. You were talking about how complex this song is in a chord structure. It's complex in terms of the number of instruments in this song as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we've got Jim on extra <laughs> bass. 30% extra. So, so, but it's funny because there's no there's other extra. bases listed. <laughs> but then we have Kevin is playing the accordion, the keyboards, the organ, the piano, 
the vibraphone, the acoustic guitar, and the electric guitar. All at the same time. It's (laughs) magic. All (laughs) at the same time. (laughs) It's amazing. And then we got Ron Anello, who was the uh, producer of this album, playing the banjo and an additional guitar and additional percussion. (laughs) Then Steven is playing acoustic and electric guitar. And Robertson is playing acoustic and electric guitar. So I'm adding it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven guitars <laughs> in this song. What's Tyler playing? Percussion. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> he and Jim like have it okay. easy. <laughs> like I, this is definitely a studio song. Playing this on oh, at yeah. concert yeah, would could, be. Yeah. It's not going to sound the same as well, this album. especially if you're Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Kevin couldn't pull that off on stage. No. <laughs> I, I should hope not. That would be a miracle. I'd love to see that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, the amount of, amount of actual instruments on this song is astounding. And the production of this song is astounding. This is a song that, but see, maybe this is another thing I didn't do right for a long time. This song needs headphones. Mm. Like I would highly recommend this. This is a headphone song, um, or or just a good sound system, I should say, not just headphones, because there's so much happening on the channels in this song mm-hmm. that's really unique. Like those arpeggios, those keyboard arpeggios um, during the uh, um, during the the, the ver- first the chorus, they actually switch. On the second chorus, there you actually go to the right channel, hmm. so they're on the left channel. Like so, there's little things that are going on with the arpeggios in this song, um, the percussion, just really unique stuff um, on the production of this, and vocally too. The vocal production on this is astounding. Oh yeah, and there are, there are a ton of vocal things coming in on this, and we <laughs> have we have a Stefan. Stefan, <laughs> welcome joining us. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome. Sir, we're talking about the song next time. <laughs> oh, I thought that was next week. No, that's this week. We already did that joke. <laughs> On to the next one. Yeah. So. That's all you got. That, he, he, you toned in just for that. Well, I can tone back out. That was the one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my thoughts about the music itself. It starts off kind of with like an organ-esque kind of instrument. And it reminded me first off of the funeral. And then um, it kind of kicks into uh, other music, which is ca- almost like a carousel, like um, some mm-hmm. kind of circus kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So and based on based on what he was singing, you know, you've got you, – you can do it better next time or do it right next time or do it whatever. Anyways, next time is the whole premise of it. What I got is like um, – you know, within this life, you, you know, you live and you die. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you come back, you can do it better next time, do it right next time. Um, but then it's like the carousel, which is like, um, it goes around circular, you know, um, next shot you, uh, you got, um, you can do it better, I guess. That's I the- hadn't even thought of that. That is actually a really good mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> and and I have to say, like that, using that point, the ending of this song also kind of matches up with that kind of carousel y, or, or not so much a carousel, but like that music box type feel mm. at the end makes it feel almost fairy book like. Is that a Spanish guitar at the end? No, that's that's pretty judgmental. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, if I had to guess, I would say that's the piano, because when they do really, because I swear I hear a Spanish guitar there. When they but. do the acoustic, you can. Well, maybe it's on top of the piano, but the the right. little chiming things I thought were chimes. <clears throat> but when they do the acoustic version, you can on the dual disc, you can see it's actually Kevin playing the piano. Oh wow! Okay. By the way, um, if you haven't gone out and seen it, um, definitely recommend getting the dual disc. I definitely recommend watching the uh, DVD extras, uh, especially for this oh, one, yeah, to yeah. watch them play it in the in the uh, studio, because this one's a lot of fun. 
to That's, I remember I did have the dual disc when I got this. That's right. I, I shouldn't say fun. This song is completely and utterly different when it's played in the studio acoustically. You can count on me to mess it up. You can count on me to let you down again. And in time you'll see that I'm your only friend. You can always get it right next time. Next time. You can always get it right next time. I like it. It was kind of like Beatlesque in a way, you know, mm-hmm. very simple. But I thought it was and really they, good in a way. And they slow it down considerably. I don't know if you did the the count on that, Heidi, but I I think yeah, that it, it slowed did. Down it it con- did slow down. I don't have the BPM on it, but it did. I I won't say that I like one better than the other, but I like both of them. Like it, they're just completely different. And I think one of the things that's cool about that acoustic version. Is so we have Jim, Kevin, Steve, and Ed wrote the song, and on the acoustic version we have Kevin and Steven playing, and then Ed and Jim come in, and that's it. There's no Tyler on the acoustic version. No, I like the acoustic version too. They're very separate. I think I like the album version better, um, but I do have an appreciation for the acoustic version as well. I love what Kevin's doing in the acoustic version. And the but, harmonies are more to the front too on that one. It almost sounds yeah, that's true. Yeah, it almost yeah, sounds sad. Yeah. I mean, I'm I I agree. I love I love it. Now that you mentioned it, I did have the dual disc. That was the version I had because I remember I remember Kevin's late in that, and they're singing. Have you seen seen my keyboard player? <laughs> um, I remember the. So yeah, I do I do remember that now, and uh, um, yeah, I do like the I do like the acoustic version because of the harms that you can hear. Um, but I do miss all that instrumentation in the uh, stu- in the album version. I, I like we talked about all the things that Kevin is doing, and um, I miss that in the studio version. So I think I do give the edge to that version. I I would not be sad if I heard either one of those versions in concert. Like if they decided mm. to break this down and do the acoustic version for the front, you know, coming to the front of the audience and doing that version in concert. I wouldn't be like, oh, I wanted to hear the other. Ver-. I would, I'd be totally okay with it. Speaking of which, they don't play this in concert that much. Uh huh. That was my question. They played this twice. BNL's played this twice since Steve has left. Um, Steven's played it eight times live from home. Oh, wow. But I don't think it's because Steven, it was more of a Steven song or anything. I think it's more of the fact that the, the vocals are much more bent towards Steven's voice. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't see any other BML <clears throat> member kind of covering that. And also, like, this song fell off their radar after the Peep Show tour that promoted this album. Mm-hmm. So I think it has more to do, like, they had so many songs to play that this yeah. one just fell off. Yeah, I definitely heard them do this one live because they did do it when I saw them at Peep Show. Um, but I agree with what you had to say. I mean, this is this is a straight-up Steve lead vocal. But the stuff he's doing at the end there... I mean, I know it's not quite, it's not quite um, break your heart level, Stephen, but it gets close. It yeah. gets there, <clears throat> and that's kind of a vocal thing that I think that Stephen needs to do. Yeah, and if Stephen didn't write those lyrics at, at that point, like he is an amazing actor and professional singer, in that if he is putting his heart and soul into something that didn't, he did not write, that didn't mean something that much to him, and he's doing that with that last verse i am ex- so thoroughly amazed steven 100 percent. i'm steven come on the show and we, correct know me if I'm wrong. we know you listen steven w- steven 100 wrote verse two and four or, 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 or i guess it'll be verse and three i guarantee it that rhyme scheme and the tone of them that's steven that had <laughs> like you <laughs> um comfort and community obliterated given opportunity i hesitated even my humility is humiliated those are Stephen. <laughs> they said, sa- "I don't know. They could be Stephen or Ed. Like I could see Ed saying, even my humility is humiliated.' I, right? Okay. I, I could see that, but I, like the other ones, yeah, I, I totally think that those would yeah. be Stephen type lines. But that it's it's a shame I have to wait until the ending 
that it just sounds so much like a Steven type lyric. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Jim and Kevin are so simplistic with their. I don't like to say it's simplistic, mm-hmm. but they are. They're very like they keep things short. They keep things tight mm-hmm. and contained in their lyrics. Yeah. This is very wordy, which comes off as Steve or Ed to me. Yeah. Every vow I ever take is just pretending. I mean that. That to me sounds like a Stephen Duff or a Paige Duffy line. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if anything, <laughs> this uh, that this mess I make is worth defending. I mean, that's. Yeah. I I absolutely love that yelling almost like he uh, is yeah, full yeah. out full power like feeling moment, mm-hmm. and then into the whisper. You can always yeah. get it. That this mess I make is worth You can always get it right next time. Next time. Oh my goodness, it draws you mm-hmm. in. Mm. I really liked the uh, the chorus and the the whole you can always get it right next time. Next time. It was just for me a great reminder that um to never give up. Yeah, uh, that I'm human, and even if I if I screw up a little bit, I can always get it right next time. If I remember that that mistake, <laughs> that's the key for me. But I really liked like that. Even even the second part of that chorus, it was just a little bit off with his timing. It was just great. I liked it. Uh, so supposedly, I mean, there's a lot of theories on what this song is about between um, suicide, <laughs> George Bush, to suicide. To- oh my gosh, yes. One of the websites said that it was about George Bush and the Iraq War, and I'm like, uh, no, th- no. <laughs> mm-hmm. there, there was an, there was no. another song where that was the That's same theory too. Yeah, well, I was that one I can see ago, more yeah. on. Yeah, but I this is. This is another one of the Steven down on himself. Like it's it's so similar Steven dialogue lyric, um, and brilliant. Like the even my humility is humiliated. <laughs> How amazing is that line? But this whole you know you can you can get it right next time. Is he talking to himself where he's like you can count on me to mess it up to let you down again? Is he saying that the person he's with could get it right with another person next yeah. time? Or that... Well, that's that's where the interpretation... Uh, yeah, because, <laughs> and in time you'll see that I'm your only friend. Right. Is he, <laughs> is he saying that leaving him is the mistake and they can get it right next time? Or is he saying you'll get it right being with someone else next time? Because I'm going to screw it up right. every like, time. Which interpretation? Well, is... I I feel like Stephen tends to wander lyrically into that that self flogging thing quite a bit, where he, he does berate himself and everything. And you know, um, we know like everybody, Stephen's had his demons, and and I could see you know this being something that's that's on his head. I I've always taken this song. I think originally I did hear it as someone telling someone else. I've come to think this song is a is a is a is a self meditation. It's 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 a, it's it's a monologue, a self monologue. Um, I really like I, I I hear that very strongly in at least in my head. Everyone's gonna think differently, but I I feel like you can always get this right next time. Next time, you know, you can count on me to mess it up. I feel like I it sounds to me like someone who keeps messing up or making mistakes and say get you'll a, get you're it gonna right. get this right. You're gonna encourage it. And and in right. a sense, it's a very positive song. I mean. You can take a very strong positive message out of this. That bridge, which where that's gonna says, be Kevin or, or Jim. It's gonna be Kevin or Jim that came up with the mm-hmm. with the chorus, right? Because it is way so it yeah, is so, yeah, so yeah. positive that. <laughs> and I think you're right, Jeff. I agree with you. I think it's like he's t- saying to himself, yeah. "You got this next time, dude." Mm-hmm. And then he's like, "Well, you can count on me to mess it up. You keep <laughs> getting down on himself again. You can count on me to let you down again." Anytime you'll see that, oh yeah, I let you down again, but you can always get it right next time, buddy. You've got this. Um, and then comfort in community of yeah, literature. Help me out with that, I light. that line. I love it, but I have no understanding of it. Well, I think, um, I mean, he's he's at the point. He does, he's at his lowest because of the last line. So his his esteem's low. Um, his his ability to socialize. He's his his. 
he's talking himself out of relationships. I guess, you know, uh, you can count on me to mess it up. So the comfort in community is obliterated. I can't find comfort in other people. I can't uh, okay. find comfort I don't see it that way. Um, I see it as how like do you see you've it? made a mistake and made a, yourself into such an ass that you can't walk around town without, you know, the whole community going like pointing a finger and saying, look, there's mm-hmm. the dumbass. Or there's the dummy. Well, that would go along. With, both of those would go along with even my humility. Humility is humility. Ah, yeah. You know what I'm Which saying. Which is <laughs> such a great line. We could we could talk about that line all day. That's <laughs> well, the, the comfort in community obliterated. When you break up with somebody or if you mess up a relationship, your together friends mm-hmm. are gone. Like they they take a side, and usually the side of the person that got screwed over. So that comfort in community obliterated. Mm-hmm. Given the opportunity, make to make things better or apologize. I hesitated, didn't say I was sorry. Uh, so I I get that. Yeah. Like I kind of get that vibe. That's a great thing I like about BNL is uh, they can have a whole verse mean a cornucopia of different things and then the next one mean uh something else in a completely different context and apply to a different situation or scenario and it's just great that way how they are able to Mm. bring it all together and again the even my humility Mm -hmm. It's humiliated. <laughs> Using the term humility and humiliated. It's a great play on words. Same... Yes. That's, yeah. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. Atlanta, it's just so, <laughs> it's so good. I think that's my favorite uh, line. In I think it's time. one of my favorite BNL lines ever, to be honest. I mean, it reminds me of one of my other ones, which is I, I put the me in monogamy. I mean, it's it's that same vibe of a line, um, and it's so good. It's using that play on words to, to basically take the meaning of one word and then just – put the best twist on it and highlight so what good. the meaning of both words yeah, really the, is what, right exactly yeah and i've never thought of how those two words in in so many ways mean different things but once you compare them even though they sound the same putting them next to each other like that you're like oh my goodness right right they have that same base they have that human structure it's like 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 stefan was saying we're all human and you know and the basis of human is humility and humiliated. Like it's, uh, it's all right there. So good. And then that harmony right after that next verse mm. yeah. of yeah. the, that, that little riff with mm. the next, the yes, harmonies yeah. right there. Oh, it's like, it's like that echo in your head of the little voice on your shoulder. That's saying next time. Mm-hmm. It's okay. And I, <laughs> next I, time. I've heard that too. I kind of hear in my head that it's almost like the two voices in your head talking to each other. You know, you got the yeah. one person like comforting community, obliterated every opportunity. I hesitated. My humility is humiliated. And then you have like that other voice in your head, that that voice of hope going, you can always get it right next time. You know, it's kind of. What? But and even right after echo, that, where it just time. has the yeah, harmony right. <laughs> going, next time, yes. next <laughs> yeah. time. And then he goes into the when you die. Like, yeah. it's well, those like, harmonies. Those- he's. He goes into that 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 um, part of that that next verse of that when you die you make a list of all of these regrets you had all the people you never kissed all of the choices that you didn't make all of those things and then oh well <laughs> <laughs> oh well I did it again it's the way it is sometimes those next times so those but that little voice on the shoulder that just says you know. Next time it's okay. So then he goes into that mindset. Well, yeah, but then when you die, you make this list of all the things you didn't do, your bucket list that you never went, got through, the things you never did or achieved, or the women that you never went after because you were too afraid or you thought you were going to screw it up again. And like, so it just kind of leads him back into that. That, yeah, that it, it's almost spiral. like the song has multiple, it, it's like, um, Oh, shoot. The one where he shoots himself. He shoots the boy in the head. Um, I live with it every day. Where there's like where there's like five different three or four different pieces of the life that they're talking about that all have this central meaning. I almost get that with this because that 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 bridge 
is about people he didn't go after. So it's not about this relationship because this is a completely different thing. He didn't, there's other people he didn't go after. He, he didn't make it's everything, everything he didn't do, right. every choice he didn't make. Every breath, yeah. every breath you take. <laughs> and I, I think it's uh, great that you're oh right. That he, he's spiraling. He's getting stuck, sucked into that like negative thinking at that point. And then at the end of it, he's like, "Oh well." <laughs> and then it's uh, it's a shame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, he has he hasn't lost hope yeah. yet either. Because my favorite line, I love humility, but I my favorite line of the song is everything. Every vow I what was that? Uh, every vow I ever take. Uh, no. I, Everything I've yet to break is surely bending. Is my favorite line of the song because he basically is just saying, "If I haven't done it yet, oh yeah, I'm go- gonna I will happen. mess up my life. <laughs> <laughs> I've already started. I've already started. I've already set the foundation for my next catastrophe. <laughs> I have like 457 ways of up. I mean, plain and simple. Oops, I did the Yoko. <laughs> And that next line afterwards, every vow I t- ever take is just pretending that this mess I make is worth defending. Like, why do I? The more we, the more we do this, I'm hearing yeah. every breath you take. You realize that you can't not. <laughs> every vow you take, every move you, pre- it's right there. But <laughs> this is By a the better way, song. Does that, does that count as a reference? No to matter how song? much I mess it up, I'm gonna keep uh, defending that I'm. It's worth uh, defending. Yes. Screw yeah. up. Like I. But the fact that he's like, why do I even bother pretending and defending myself on this? And I love the line, too. It's a shame I have to wait until the ending. Like, he knows it's going to end mm-hmm. at some yeah. point. It's a shame I got to wait for this relationship to be over. So I just have to go through this circle again and say, well, it was me. It's not you. It's me. Mm-hmm. It's always yeah. me. It's only me. <laughs> wait, maybe not. Which which goes well, back. We've talked about that a lot, and especially Stephen songs. <laughs> Is it always has that seem seemingly like the the um, putting himself down the 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 the, the derogatory, derogatory feelings towards himself and um, he he seems to do a lot of that in his lyrics and uh, <laughs> but it works <laughs> it does it works <laughs> but it's a shame I have to wait till the ending is that referring to the relationship or is that referring to his life and reincarnation I take kind of like life, the but. the verse before he starts out with you know when you die. No, it's like too bad at the ending. Kind of a, a simile there. Is this a man that is suicidal saying, I wish I could just end it so I can find out the the true answers and next time I'll get it right? Yeah. It's, it's a very dark take. And when I read mm-hmm. that with someone, I was like, Actually, there's a lot behind that, and I can see that. And this just took a war on drugs direction. Yeah, <laughs> a war on drugs, huh? Oh, you'll, we'll get to that one. Yeah, we'll seven. get to that. Well, in about three years. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure that we yeah, get that right. we give you plenty <laughs> of Prozac before. I'll then. be 167 <laughs> years old. It's been 87 years. Totally fine. But it'll be worth it. <laughs> That war on drugs. We talking about the crap. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> oh, I had one more point that I wanted to make. Oh, the rhyme scheme in this is so great, yeah, too. I was thinking about, about like, you can count on me to mess it up. You can count on me to let you down. Mm-hmm. Again, I love that play too. And in time, you'll see I'm your only friend. So it's a related rhyme. Mm. It's not a clean rhyme. But then, um, obliterated, hesitated, humiliated like those are, it's such great, almost well, alliteration. And then the middle um, of that is community, opportunity, humility. Right. Right. It's right. Community, obliterated, opportunity. Community, opportunity, humility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Community. It's such really smart writing. And um, but again, the interplay of up and down, mm. mess it up, let you down. Like that line. I again, some of the really good mm-hmm. uh, list, kiss, mistake, make. That was yeah. Uh, that was okay, <laughs> but not like it didn't like need it there. It didn't need it there. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and wait, break, yep. wait, ending, break, bending, fake, pretending, make, defending. Right. Like, wait, break, take, make. Like, I, there's such. If I had to guess, I would have said that that bridge was Ed. 
Yeah, <laughs> I would guess that. Ed, anything. we know you listen. Come on the show. Andy I love the bridge. Challenge. Don't get me wrong. It just it has a different feel to it about the mm-hmm. way that it mm-hmm. is, the way that it's spoken, the way that it it flows. It has more of an Ed type of flow. I agree. It's it's it does have an Ed flow with Steven's voice. It's kind of like we took, you know, those those um, books when you were a kid where you took the head of one thing and you flipped it over and changed like the yeah. torso of yeah. another thing and created various monsters or something. Oh, you have one. No, Sweet. I was just I was just going to say, oh, like, poorly. thinking about it, like, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not the right album, but no. yeah. Mixing parts of each thing and putting it together. So it's got a little bit of everything in this, which I, I really do like. It's like, again, very interesting. I feel like that's where I must get it because I know when I write a lot of stuff, especially originals now, I feel compelled to do that. I, I like to sneak a middle rhyme and an ending rhyme, a middle rhyme and an ending rhyme. And I think it must come from all the B&L I listen to because they do it a lot. <laughs> And they, they do, do it really well, and I, I just, I love that. I love it when there's a middle line rhyme and an end line rhyme, like that. Um, especially when they just, they click so well like they do here. There's something very catchy about that. Very, very catchy. Very. I, I just, I dig it. Very. I know. I had written down, I mean, the only thing I came up with that we didn't say, I had written down how many police it is, just because I just kept hearing every breath you take. So I wrote down the police. <laughs> How many, um, How many humiliated humilities? Songs? <laughs> how about uh, how yeah, many humilities lashes? or how many re, re not regenerations but um self flagellation lashes? <laughs> <laughs> how many floggings? Flagellate. <laughs> how many re- not resurrections? How many um rotations? Uh, when, you, when you come back to rotation, like rotation. Uh, well, no, um, the Lazarus. Incar- Lazarus. Incar- Lazarus. incarnation, um, right? Reincarnation? Re- reincarnations. How many uh, reincarnations? People have said that like, th- oh, real. I see what you said. Okay, all right. Oh, I so, get it. Uh, someone said resurrection, that? and I said incarnation, oh, no, and you said uh, reincarnation. That's yeah, okay. That's what I was looking for. How yeah. many reincarnations? Okay, I can okay. see that. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh Stefan. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice. Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, the song, it's, um, interesting, it's very layered, a lot of musical things going on in it, um, I like the chorus and how it all pulls together, the harmonies are great, the sound is just really good, it's super simple, um, yet, of course, BNL layers the lyrics and makes them complicated, but makes it so easy, uh, I, I I like the song. I think it sounds good. It's kind of got some of the the Beatle esque or monkey esque kind of, um, you know, nineteen fifty kind of sound in a way. It's weird. I don't know to me, but um, mm-hmm. uh, I like this song. I like it quite a bit. So I'm going to go with like a, a solid 4.5, whatever you guys came up with. Okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's great. <laughs> Reincarnation. <laughs> Reincarnation. So re- gotcha. Reincarnated four and a half times. Mm. Oh. Uh, I'm going to kind of mix it up a bit. Tracy, I never. I'm going through my list and I'm trying Uh-oh. to figure out. Oh boy! Exactly how I feel about this, um, because I, it's a hard one for me. Um, I I was like I was thinking before that like oh I I don't ever like go out to listen for this song, but at the same time I enjoy this song. Um, because I don't go out to listen for it, it has to drop below a four, I would almost have to say. But then I looked at my other ones that are below four, and I'm like, I like this one better than than those songs. So I'm going to have to raise it up to higher than a four. I'm going to say a 4.1. Ooh. Must have been the uh, dismount. I'll go off that, actually. Because, like I said... um, 
this was one for me that won an arc because I, I distinctly remember this one being more of a mess song to me when I first, first, first um, got the album. And I think just because of comparing it with everything else that I loved off the album. Um, but over time, listening to the song, I've absolutely grown to love it. Like I just, I, I have given it a chance. I've listened to it with new uh, perspective and, and uh, with headphones and, and uh, to get all those little complexities that are in it, all those little musical things, the lyrics, the rhyme scheme, the harms. Um, just the message of the song, um, it's it's become definitely one of my favorite BNL songs. I absolutely love this song. Um, this would be on a playlist. Actually, when when we listened to it, uh, when I listened to it recently for the show, I went back and played it like two more times because I wanted to hear it again. Um, so I I gotta go. I gotta go up there too. I gotta go. I actually gave this one a four point two. Very nice. Hmm. <clears throat> What do you say, so, Heidi? So, um, I really love this song. I really do. It's one of my favorite albums, um, one of my favorite songs on this album. Um, I, I love the wordplay in this. I, I love the form of this. I love the sound of this. Um, so, am I ever not loving something? Um, yeah. No. I, <laughs> um. I, the, some of those lines that are just so good, and I listen to this one all the time. It is on one of my playlists. It's on multiple playlists. Um, not that I'm into self-flagellation myself, but um, the I'm going to give it a 4.6. Uh, wow. Uh, I really love it. Well, I, I do have to say that in the year in review... Um, now that I've said this, this this one might actually go up for me. Hmm. After Do I really think about it, this one might actually go up for me. Original score. <clears throat> you know what I am? I'm gonna I'm gonna bump it up. I'm gonna say a four point four actually, Tracy, because I, I okay. like I do like this. Yeah, I the more I'm thinking about it, and like like when when uh, Heidi was talking about the lyrics, I'm like, man, I just really love the lyrics of this. Uh, yeah, I yeah. got I I think I got to go higher on it. I got to go four point four. And I like, like how I said, they're sung too. They're just yeah, it's just yeah. a good song. Yeah, yeah. The vocals on this are great. Like like Stefan, you were saying. I mean, it's just it it sounds simple, but it's not. <laughs> <And> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a deceptive song. All right, guys. Well, I will catch you guys next time. I have to go outside. I gotta take some pictures of the stars. You know, oh, I no. love 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 not living in the city. I can see all the wonderful stars, the galaxies, and. You know, with my new camera, I can get wonderful night mm. photographs. You know, I can tell you all about them next time. You got to tell us about your new camera next time? <laughs> as, <laughs> as Heidi holds up the disc of, of night photographs. Bare Naked Ladies <laughs> Club, Ladies Room, Volume 1, Night Photographs. <laughs> oh, I thought it was that a was new on, camera. That, that's on Buck yes, Naked, I too, also right? Buck Naked. That, that's on, yeah, and, okay. and Bare Naked mm-hmm. Lunch. Oh, okay. I was really impressed there. I'm like, wow, he, oh. he managed to get new camera in there and in a sentence. And that's impressive. But no, it's <laughs> night right. photographs. I remember really liking this one when we listened to all of Buck Naked. I, I like, this, like one. this one. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. It's a fun song. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard yeah. this yeah. one. To record that. It's going to be fun. I never heard uh, this one that we just did. I never heard of uh, night photographs. I haven't heard of, I'd say, 95% of... The songs that we read, <laughs> I've never heard of until the this day. Well, Which is good. We need someone yeah. who's never heard it before to yeah. go. Oh yeah, that's this is the, my, well, my I, thoughts on that. I ha- I hadn't known this one until the show where we did the Buck Naked, where we listened to all of it. And that's- thanks, that was fun. Don't forget, no regrets, except maybe one. And yeah. as you can see from my my video. I'm very big into night photographs as well. <laughs> right, right. You wear your sunglasses at night while you're taking night photographs. We, Stefan, we haven't seen you on video in like three weeks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you've been complaining that I don't wear a shirt. I don't complain about that. <laughs> I like it when you don't wear a shirt. Brown chicken, brown cow. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I don't know how farm animals come into this, but thanks, well, Heidi. A lot of well, hey, I'm a cow. I'm a cow. I'm curious. Gotcha.
To celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wild, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.